first stop, I know, I know the uh, the main item here is the sports complex, but uh, other news in the city. And I wanted to give uh, an update about the property at the corner of Elliott Street and North Montello Street. Uh, that old antiques, that old antiques building, that uh, that burnt down. So we have members uh, members from the EPA here to uh, to give an update. The EPA is taking up the project. So everyone, uh, round of applause for the EPA. So I guess I have to speak loud before everybody hear me. Anyway, my name is Tom Hansopoulos. I'm with uh, EPA, the Super Pump Program. I am Tom Hadzopoulos. I'm with EPA, the Superfund Program. We clean up hazardous waste sites. Uh, this site that we're cleaning up right now has asbestos in it. It burnt down back in June, last June. Uh, the state went there, they investigated the site, and had asbestos. And it was surrounding the building. That, that, that was the asbestos shingles that surrounded the building. It got commingled in the fire. So there's asbestos within the rubble of the burned debris. They called us up because we have funds to do cleanups like that. We did our investigation. We did find that it had friable asbestos and also asbestos containing the you know other debris that contains asbestos. So we started our removal in uh, May, May 15th. What we did is we went through the entire rubble, almost all of it. We did volume reduction. Uh, we relocated all the debris. I don't know if you guys seen how, how the site looked. It was all covered. We moved it from where it was. We consolidated it by about two thirds. So we have two, two thirds less debris than we started off with. And we're getting ready to ship it off site. We recovered the entire pile while we're doing it, while we're doing this work. We uh, segregate out the, the metal, about 15 tons of metal. We recycled it. And what we did in the process, we we're using air monitors all around the site to make sure that there's nothing becoming airborne in the, you know, in the community. We were using water control to suppress any kind of dust that would be coming up while we're digging it. Our air, mo air monitors since May 15th didn't show that anything was coming off the site. We used so much water, we basically, you know, the, the, the site was com completely wet at all times. And also, the weather helped a lot because it was raining. So we have uh, about 3,000 cubic yards of material, which we're going to start shipping out next Monday. All together is going to be about 100 trucks that are going to come in and out from the site. Each truck carries about 28 tons or 28 yards, cubic yards, of material. This material will go through Montello Street and up to 24 and upstate New York to a facility that is going to get landfilled. We're going to start, like I said, next Monday. Uh, we should be finished in another five to six weeks. That's what I, that's the process of the, the site so far. Any questions? I want to make it quick because I see all these nice photographs that you guys are going to discuss later. Yes. Yes. No, we had we actually hired a truck that's constantly spraying all the areas that are being excavated. In certain areas, when it when it was raining, certain days that it was raining, we didn't use water. Yeah. 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 There are certain areas that actually do not have asbestos. The far end, right next to the the. Uh, I'm sorry. I can talk very loud if you want me to. But 
the far, the, can you hear me now? Okay, there we go. The far end of the site, right next to the ambulance, that's the site that actually doesn't have asbestos. The, the, the site that had the, all the asbestos was <coughs> along North Montello Street. Yeah. If you, if, if, it, if it was wet, we didn't spray. In other words, the, the minute that you may have seen it or whenever you've seen it, maybe it was so wet there was nothing coming up. Because we have three air monitors and we also had personal air pumps that collected samples that never showed anything. That's, they wear Tyvex only for their clothing, you know, so their clothing doesn't get dirty. So, but if you ever see anything like that and concerns you, we have a trailer right there. Feel free to drop by and tell me I'm there all the time. I'm the on-scene coordinator. I'm the manager of the site. But feel free to come in and if you see something that looks funny, definitely feel free to come to the trailer and tell me. Thank you. No, we need people like you, honestly. We, if, we, if there's something that's, that's going on that we don't pick up, Anything else? Oh, oh, I can? Okay, sorry. I am not going to stuck here. We got a microphone here. Everybody has to speak at the microphone. The only thing that I know is that the owner uh, said that he's got somebody in line to, to purchase the property. That's the only thing that I know. I, I have no idea what's going to happen. When we get through, it's going to be a flat piece of land with nothing really on it. When, when, you're, when you're pointed out for a question, uh, could you please come up to the microphone so Brockton Cable Access can pick it up? Uh, the, the microphones, the microphone right here is for them, uh, so this can be heard later on, you know, so people know what the question was if they aren't here and they're watching it on TV later. Yes. We're talking about the North Montello Street uh, fire. We're not at that part yet. Yeah. We get to it. I'll wait. I'll hold my breath. Um, 
you know, I'm doing my best to keep residents and, and, and neighbors informed on what's going on and kept in the loop. Um, to his credit, uh, Mark Rukas of New Heights has, you know, has always answered the phone, has made his cell phone number available to, uh, you know, to people who live nearby who have questions or concerns. Uh, and he is, he is someone who lives in the community, is not going to, uh, you know, start this and then randomly disappear. Um, I want to thank everyone for coming out. You know, this is, uh, this is, this is very, in, this is very important for the neighborhood and for the city. So I'm happy to see so many, uh, so many faces here. Just a, just a reminder, uh, when you ask a question, please come up to this microphone uh, so Brockton Cable Access can pick it up so anyone watching later can hear your questions and hear everything uh, that we hear in the room. Um, this is, the, this is the, the microphone the school has, so we're going we're gonna to leave this, we're going to leave this up here. But I'm going to start with, uh, or, or continue with, inviting the representatives from New Heights Development up to begin discussing uh, the sports complex. All right, thank you. Hello everyone, uh, my name is Wayne Benson, I'm a principal with RKB Architects and I have the pleasure of presenting the uh, Champion City Sports Complex to you this evening. Uh, it's nice that we get some, uh, some daylight, the longest day of the year, so uh, it's nice to see the light shining through the windows. Uh, Mark Lucas is the uh, developer of the project. Uh, and he's, he's the guy that, uh, that brought us in, and, uh, and it, it is his vision that we're talking about tonight. Uh, Zach Glass is an uh, intern with RKB Architects. He's also uh, done a lot of the research related to the sports leagues, uh, lacrosse and, and soccer and such forth. And then on the end, Tom Clifford uh, has worked on the business plan and the models and the agreements with the city. So um, that's that's our theme. Did you want to uh, did you just want to say something about being yeah. yeah. Hello, everybody. Um, my name is Mark Rukas. I was born and raised in the city, um, and still have a home here on 16 Highland Circle. Um, I own the property that is called Remover Park. I bought it uh, not that long ago, probably about a year ago. Um, I've been renting the property for about eight years. Uh, we screen loom on the property and uh, make material and things like that as of right now. Um, originally, I was thinking about doing a sports complex on the 11 acres that I do own now. And then I heard that the city was going to be um, putting the 22 acres that they own up for auction for development of homes and, or apartments or something like that. Residential development is what was going to happen. So at that point, I, you know, had the I had the other property, and I didn't really want to see uh, houses go there. I wanted to try to find something um, that everybody could get behind and would be good for the community. And uh, at the time, Michelle Dubois was the uh, ward counselor. Um, so I went to uh, I, I put a plan together. John Holmgren um, helped me with the plan. Uh, we put a plan together for a sports complex, not knowing a ton about sports complex. I just knew it was uh, something that was uh, needed in the city. Um, you see it in a lot of other towns, you know, and it's very, very popular. It's a, it's, it's a good thing for the community. It's a good thing for kids. It's organized sports. It's not like you send your child there and they just go wild. It's an organized sports. There's coaches, uh, there's leagues, there's teams, and it's all kinds of sports. People call and ask about is it going to just be soccer is it just going to be baseball it, you can do anything in these facilities so I thought it was a great idea I spent some money I went and showed the plan to the mayor he loved the idea I went and showed the plan to Michelle Dubois she loved the idea um, I worked with the town planner Rob May he loved the idea but they couldn't sell me the land um, they couldn't sell me the 22 acres 
they had to put it out to the public uh, for an RFP. So that's what they did. They, they put it out for RFP, and another group um, was going to come in and, and respond as well. We spent a lot of time and research uh, responding to this RFP. They extended the deadline several times, so there was plenty of opportunity for other people to come in, but no one else responded. Um, so we went forward, we, 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 we put in our papers, and uh, we ended up winning the RFP bid. Uh, right now we're in the process of doing our due diligence, or testing I should say, on the property. We have an opportunity to do uh, wetlands testing, test the, the, the soils to see you know, what's in the ground, um, environmental testing. So this is an opportunity for us to walk away from the project if we want. Uh, so you know, if, if we find something that is just catastrophic, that you know, a huge cost or something like that that we didn't see, then we would walk away from the project. So we're in the middle of that process right now. And then after that process, if we say we're, we want to go forward, then we go to another stage into the RFP, um, and then we talk about how we're going to end up buying the property from the city and, you know, moving forward with the construction. Um, we have spoken with many people to partner with us on this. We're, we're not, um, we don't run uh, facilities like this. So we're looking for professionals that have done it um, and or own some already, like Taunton, Four Kicks in Taunton. There's a place in Bridgewater. Hanover, the U in Hanover. So there's people out there that are running these facilities. You're welcome to go anytime uh, to look at them all. We pretty much modeled ours very close to Taunton, uh, the four kicks in Taunton. Uh, we think that's a great facility. The guy has uh, three, and he's opening up a fourth one right now in Reading. Um, you know, this is the way of the future for children to play. Uh, no one plays like they used to on the streets. No one plays in their backyards like they used to. It's all organized sports. And I think it's important for kids in Brockton um, to have that. Brockton's been a huge sports town. Um, like I say, I grew up here, went to the high school here, went to all the schools here. And sports was huge. And it kept kids out of trouble. And coaches, you know, male and female coaches were like family. They, they took you in like a father figure for some kids, like an uncle for some kids, like an aunt like a mother figure, I mean, that's, sports are important for children. And so I felt as though this would be a great thing for the city. And we're here tonight to find out if there's anything or any concerns that everyone has. We want to address them up front if we can. And we want to know if this is something the city wants as well. We're not just, you know, we don't want to just come here and try to ram it down someone's throat. We want to know if you folks are in favor of it, or if you think the city needs it as well. We want, we want to get as much feedback as possible, positive, negative, whatever people want to talk about. So that's why we're here tonight, basically, is to answer questions if we can and try to address concerns. So with that, we'll open up to any questions if people have questions. I live right, well, I don't know how it is right over here. I can watch my backyard. I'm not a big fan of this for multiple reasons. One, you're in flood zone D. A lot of water back there. Tremendous amount of... Uh, Speak up. Can you give them that microphone too at the same time? Yeah, you want to bring that one to that one or something? That's okay. There's one up there, Jack. There you go. That works. We're in a flood zone D zone over here. we got a tremendous amount of groundwater. Now, does that include the property at the top of Howard Street, too? Howard Ave? What do you mean the top of Howard Ave? Right at the corner of Howard Ave and Howard Street. Does that include that property? Yeah. No, that's a, no, that's a different, no, property. different property. Yeah. Different property, different owner. Okay, now, as far as traffic, you know, you're, you're in the middle of a kid infested neighborhood. You know, the crime that comes with it, the, 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 it, it really isn't a really good idea. I mean, it's a great proposal, don't get me wrong. Right, but. I just can't see what put all with just thinking about people who can't find parking there, they park it on everybody's side streets, you can't get in, they can get out. You know, I've been here over thirty years. And my neighbors most of them are not feeling well right now, they're not here. They're not for it either. And you know I can try to address Where are you grabbing water from? Is you grabbing the water from the new the new line just went in the how it We haven't even got that far yet. We're we're not going to need a lot of water. The fields are going to be 
uh, synthetic fuels. And how, what, how much the square footage of the building? 126,000 square feet. Holy. Oh. Yeah, that's a big building. It sure is. Now, and how far from the, the, the back wall on, on this side are you coming with uh, how much of the trees are you leaving there? No trees in the left. No tree, so I'm going to I'm going to walk on my back window. I'm going to see this. No, we're going to be installing a right burner. Maybe Wayne can address that question. I don't know how you want to power the question. Power down. If you if you look at the map right behind you, there's a lot of space in between the property they're going to use and Howard Ave. Yeah, but on the map, here's one thing, but the, the actual square foot, I'd like to know the exact how far. Mm -hmm. I don't want to look on my back window and see that. I mean, I've had privacy for 30, over 30 years. You can look over a plane, you probably see your house. Yeah, I, I already did. Yeah. Yeah. If you take a look at the plan, and there's also, for everybody that's interested, there's a, a site section that shows uh, the landscape firm that, that uh, Mark is proposing uh, to buffer the neighbors from the property. Uh, and, and there are there is going to be trees located between the property. And are you are you doing any blasting on the site? Because I know when they put that uh, that wheels in front, they cracked all our foundations years ago. But we were too young and stupid to know what to do. When we just end up fixing our foundations. Yeah. You know, you do blasting and, and you know you ruin my foundation, you're gonna own my house. I, I don't know. We haven't we haven't gotten that far into it today. When you do do blasting, they put geiger meters on your lawn. To protect, you know, well, stuff sure. was coming off my wall. I remember this years ago. Yeah. Stuff was coming off my walls. Yeah, you, you get way ahead. Yeah, of I, I'm, I'm just, I'm just thinking right ahead. Now. I mean, yeah. I'm just thinking of all this. Yeah. Really, as far as you know, you're putting a sports complex in a thickly settled children's neighborhood. Yeah. And wait, 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 wait. Not coming, you're not coming in to any neighborhoods. We're coming. Well, you got a school. You got a school. You got a school right behind you here. You've right. got, you got houses There's everywhere. No cars going through the, through any neighborhoods. They're coming in clean. Access. It was 37. And I mean, that's my access to get out of my house. But, I mean, what about if some terrorist wants to come in? I mean, I'm not saying it's going to happen. You know, I always think something's going to happen in Gillette one of these days. I just, I'm overthinking things there. I don't know what to tell you about terrorists. You know, but I'm just saying. Yeah. yeah just there's a lot of... There's terrorist insurance out there today. Yeah, that, that's crazy, too. It's like global warming now, insurance. Well, those are my best concerns. I mean, I'm, like I said, I'm, I'm a man at the bottom over here. You know, I, I thought you needed one way in and one way out. You could about right. in and out the same way? Well, yes. There'll be, be emergency exits. This is kind of another time where we have proper and microphones and speakers so we all can hear questions and answers. It's a one way conversation. You need to read through this and do it right. Okay. All right. All right. We hear you. We hear you. We will uh, we'll try to organize it better. I apologize for that. Maybe bring up a map and show someone. Right, right. Um, I'm I'm sorry for the confusion with the microphone. This was this was not intentional. Um, when it comes to this meeting, um, I spent from about June sixth until a couple of days ago personally handing letters out to every house north of Hovenden, west of Sully, and south of Lisa. All right? Can you can you go into depth more about the about the plan itself? You know, explain explain uh, you know the the land the land you're going to use as a buffer the trees, the access, things like that, you know, more in depth and then open, you know, we'll open questions after. Sure. All right? Yeah. All right, so we'll just hold the questions for a couple of minutes. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to give a, uh, an overview of the property and the project. Hopefully it'll answer some of the questions so that we can, uh, we can tighten up the conversation, okay? All right. So uh, Mark talked to you about the fact that uh, he owned property uh, adjacent to the city property and just so everybody can get their bearings okay uh, when we talk about the New Heights property it's this this lot here which is currently being used for screening I, if everybody can see it's the it's the parking lot portion of it to the west okay uh, the city property uh, abuts the school play fields over here to the east uh, and that's the school is over here, Brookfield School. There's a there's a larger neighborhood plan that people can come up and take a look at in case you're disoriented. Okay, uh, what's happening essentially is then the 
the building that you're seeing is, is, is going in behind the warehouse building that we were talking about here, 126,000 square feet. Uh, and what, what we're planning here is it's a multi-sports complex. So the fields will be used for lacrosse and soccer. That's the intent. There's some uh, basketball courts and other sports uh, as it's, and it's market driven. So it's, it's going to be responding to the league's desire and what, what they're looking for. Uh, so as far as the buffer zone, you heard us talking about the fact that there is a landscape buffer. So what we did put in place, and you'll see it on the plan uh, along the neighborhood areas all the way along, and you'll see it in section on the wall over there, and Zach's holding up the section over here, okay? So what Mark's going to do, he's going to be building this, this berm up six feet high, with evergreen trees, and it's going to act as a visual buffer and also a sound buffer. On top of that, there's going to be a security fence so people aren't going back and forth over that. Okay, so we're, we're protecting the, the neighbor's properties from sound, trespassing, and, and the visual impact that, that this might have. Although we think it's a beautiful building, we think it's a beautiful project, but we understand that people want their privacy. Uh, <clears throat> Inside the building, we're going to have a regulation size field, and it's going to be subdividable into six uh, smaller fields for individual training and work, uh, depending on, again, what the market's looking for. As Mark said, he is, uh, you know, he's investigating, he's spending a lot of time talking with the people that are in the industry and, and working with partners. Um, Let's see. So uh, why don't we do this? Uh, so we can keep it organized. People that would like to have a question, please come up here and uh, I will uh, I'll repeat your question over the microphone so that everybody can hear, but please uh, if you start lining up here and we'll go from there. And, uh, and, and it's not just questions. We, we've, uh, we, we value your opinions, your thoughts, if you have some ideas on how this could be uh, a greater project, we want to hear it. Uh, so uh, we welcome all that. Hi, uh, if you could just state your name and your name and address. Hi, my name is Cheryl Lee. I live in the village section here in Brockton, Ward 6. And my big concern is the residents that live right down where, surrounding where this new project is going to come in for the sports complex. I'm all for it. But I do care, even though I don't live surrounding that area, I care about the residents that are going to surround these properties. Can you please tell and show us exactly where the entrance exit is going to be to this, and is it an existing street or not? Absolutely. Thank you for your question. So uh, as we're looking at the plan, the entrance is, is off of Howard Street. Okay, and there, there is a, there's an, there is a, a dirt road access. There's, there's a dirt road access there now, but it's not a street, and it's not coming off a neighborhood street. This is, this is directly off the main road. Uh, it's a divided entrance and exit, uh, and, and that's the primary entrance. Uh, nobody, nobody else is going to be allowed to come in here except for emergency vehicles, uh, which, have, which would have the ability to access it from another street. But that's, that's a different yeah. thing. It's yeah. not going to be open it's for, we're not going to open the gate and allow people to exit down through the side streets after yeah. an event. It's the primary entrance and exit. That's yeah. all I want to know. Right. And it's, in, it's important to, to note also how these, uh, the tournaments work. Because you see 800 cars and you're thinking it's going to be like uh, what used to be the Tweeter Sun or whatever it's called these days, uh, exiting out. That's not, that's not what happens. Uh, here, uh, the, the games go, you know, Throughout the day, they're staggered. That's right. Thank you. And and people come and go. Uh, so it's it's not a mass exodus at, at the end of the day. As, as games end, you know, you've got 20 or 30 people coming and going. It's not like uh, trying to get out of the Patriots. Either. That's exactly. That's right. And and I think I think that would be that would be my initial reaction if I saw it. And I, I can imagine that other people here are feeling the same thing. So that, it's just a dirt road right now. It's not actually an accepted street that you're going to use. Well, it, it will it will not be a street. It's going to be a private entrance. But it's it's currently there's a dirt road there. It's going to be a paved, landscaped 
entrance to the facility. It's the, so, it's their front door. It's going to be, you know. So lining it right now, there are not existing residential homes on either side of the No, that, there are no, there are not. Okay, thank you. You answered my question. You're welcome. Okay. Perhaps a dealer in talk, correct? Yeah. It's across yeah. the street, All yes. Right. So you might want to yeah. tell people that. Directly across Okay, I appreciate that. Would you just uh, state your name? And yeah, my name is Heather Turco, and I've known about this complex for 10 years now. And I think it's going to be great. Um, it's a place for our kids to go. I just wish it was a lot sooner. Um, my question is, is there going to be anything for football? Uh, yeah, I'm sure there will. I mean, like he said, it's, it's, what, it's whatever the leagues are looking for. Okay, because we have... You know what, we should pass the mic back and forth. So I think a lot of people have asked me about different sports like football, baseball. It's whatever the leagues are looking for and the availability of um, times that we have available. It's, whoever, it's a first come, first serve. If people want to come inside and play football or if the you know, flag football league wants to rent the space, they get the space. You know, that's how it works. So, Brockton is known for its football. We have the Brockton Raiders and we have the Brockton Boxers. We do not, I mean, the, uh, yeah, Brockton Junior Boxers. We do not have a home field to practice and have our games. Uh, the Brockton, as far as I know, the Brockton Junior Boxers still play and practice uh, behind North Junior High, terrible field. It's not set up for football. The Brockton Raiders are currently practicing and have their games um, at the Arnone School. And same thing, there's no lines. We really need, I think, a nice football field for Brockton so people can come watch the games, a concession stand, uh, just a nice field. I think everyone would enjoy that and I would really appreciate it. Yeah. We appreciate your input. Thank you. What's your name and your address, please? Hi, Keith Hayes, Ward 5, 111 Clark Street in Brockton. Um, I just want to add on to her. I have, I have a few questions for you. I've been involved with the Brockton Junior Boxers for, for a very long time. I was a former board member. Um, and she speaks, you know, we speak very highly with the other organization. We also have the Brockton Raiders of the City League. Um, it's nice to see this as a breath of fresh air because for us, for the last few years that we've been here since 2005, um, we've been, like she said, at North Junior High. And we've had players from the NFL business. We've had Peyton Manning come here. We've had Julian Edelman come here. We've had Ron Gronkowski come here. We've had Patrick Pass deal with us. And we've had to bring these guys to North Junior High or we've had to borrow Brockton High's field. And it's not even just that. We have people from King Philip come here in other towns and unfortunately we build into that stigmata that we have of Brockton when they come here so seeing something like this is a big plus for the kids it's a big bolster for the community and it's something that takes away from that image that Brockton has now the questions that I do have for you is because I've been involved with sports and, and also involved with adult, adult sports a couple questions I do have on this is this is your only in and out right here yeah it's, it's a double though you got two Two lanes coming out. All right. Two lanes coming in. Um, one of my questions I have is because injuries do happen in youth sports. Yeah. So my, my worry is is that if a child gets hurt back in this playing field here and your emergency access is here, are we going to have an access road somewhere here for emergency vehicles? Because this is a long distance from here to get to a kid out back here. There'll be a crash gate, what they call a crash gate, at the end of Spring Street. Uh, there'll be a crash gate. Um, at the end of Sprague Street for emergencies only if something like that happens um, and if, if you know we we really haven't thought of that question maybe Wayne actually actually we have we have thought about it so I, I just so uh, there is uh, you know we're we're required to have uh, fire department access around the perimeter of the building as, as I'm sure most uh, quite a few of the people here know that and we do have we have we're gonna have uh, it's shown as grass, but it's a it's a it's a paver that that uh, fire trucks and emergency vehicles can drive over to get back, and we're going to have access back. In addition, uh, these paths are going to be wide enough for for golf carts. Uh, you know, if there's an emergency, somebody sprains a leg or something like that, they can they can take them out off the field. So we have we did consider that as laying this out so just to be. Okay. Uh, yeah, I have another question also um, for events at night. Are you going to be opening this up for adult use? Because I know most of these facilities, because I do a thing with mixed martial arts, um, some of these facilities allow events at night, like mixed martial arts fightings inside this facility, so they usually apply for a liquor license. 
So I was wondering if you guys are planning on applying for a liquor license also. Um, like I said before, we're going to be partnering with someone that does this professionally. Um, you know, we're here to address the neighborhood concerns. I'm not sure about that. That could happen. I know that we're not going to have any drinking outside. I know that for a fact. Um, indoors, if there's an event and we apply for a license, a liquor license, someone wants to have a one-day liquor license, I can see something like that happening. But it's not going. To, this is going to be organized sports for adults and children, but mostly I'm thinking of children, you know. But, yeah, but if someone wanted to do grappling competition in there or something like that, I, or wrestling competitions or mixed martial arts of any type, I, I can't see why you wouldn't want to rent to them, you know. Uh, so that's, that's definitely – I think the outdoor fields will probably be shut down at 10 o'clock. That's what a lot of them do, a lot of the other ones we've been to. So I don't see anything happening after 10 o'clock. Um, you know, I live on uh, – like I said, I live over on Holland Circle close to the Rock Stadium, the, the, the uh, Brockton High School, um, you know, everything's on that side of town, right? Uh, but, you know, at Friday nights, we put our kids to bed, and then fireworks start going off at 10 o'clock. You forget to close your windows, and it wakes up everybody, and it's not a, not a great thing. So we're not going to do anything like that. It's not going to be any crazy events, no rodeos, none of that stuff is, is going to happen here. You know, it's, 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 it's a sports complex, organized sports. That's the key. It's organized, you know? So... Um, but I don't see why you wouldn't want to have something like that there, you know, whoever, whoever's going to be running it, you know. And my final question is, is some of these facilities and some of the cities and towns uh, give their city organizations a discount versus those who would come from the outside. So are there any ideas to allow, like maybe a Brock and Junior Boss or the City League, a discounted rate to use that facility versus someone from the outside that would do that? That I can't really answer. I'm sure that, you know, whoever comes in here to run this will – We'll have the answer to that question. Again, I'm, I'm going to develop it, um, either land, lease it, and build the building and rent the building. Um, I'm going to stay in control of the, of the, of the property end of it um, and not um, get involved in the day-to-day -day running of the complex. It's not something that we do. Uh, we want to build it. You know, we want to see it come here. We want to build it, and we want to partner with a strong partner that, that you know, already has all that figured out. Okay? Yep. talk about uh, the site and the building and the parking. I'm going to let Mark talk about the business and the operational end of it. Uh, so uh, to answer your last question first, uh, uh, we're showing 800 cars on the site uh, because we believe that um, the facility, uh, our research says that based on the, based on the quantity of fields and the, and the size of the building, we need to provide that much parking because we don't want to have a situation where people are parking on the side streets or anything else. We want adequate parking so people aren't searching and finding it. So that's that's the answer to that. Um, and now, do you want to talk about the Brockton first sure. aspect of it? The mic's off. This is off? So um, your question was, uh, give me the question one more time about a, a Brockton children are going to have... Brockton children first and then Brockton adults I don't, I can't answer that question. Again, I don't know how to run one of these. You know, I can build it, but I don't know how to run it. Whoever comes in here, we will have another meeting, um, and you can speak directly to whoever we decide that we're going to partner with. And they can address those questions 
you know, that's something I, I can't speak to right at the moment. If I may, ma'am, though, Tom Clifford, if I may, uh, you're talking about 70 hours a week of usable rental time. And I don't think that the AAU tournaments are each and every weekend. So th I think there are plenty of usable hours that you can use to so that Brockton has a you know participation rate in this whole thing. There's, there's plenty of hours. Okay? Okay. My name is Joanne Zayman. I live on Boston Street. I have um, two questions. The first one has been touched on a little bit already, um, but I wanted to more specifically ask, you got you, sir, are going to have specific say in who gets to operate this facility. I'm wondering whether you can actually stipulate some of these things that people are concerned about, about things like actually having it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wonder if you can more, can you hear me now? No. Okay. But I wonder if you can more specifically ask whoever is granted the rights to operate this facility, whether they could have a Brockton first, or even perhaps a discount for Brockton teams to use the facility. I know in lots of towns these are actually very expensive to use, so I'm wondering if you can talk a little bit about that. And then my second question relates to construction. I want to know how long it's going to last and what you're going to do to minimize disruption during the construction period. Um, so the first question was, uh, can I stipulate if Brock can get, yeah. get discounts? And um, I don't think I would commit to that at this time. Uh, again, I don't even know who we're going to partner with. We've spoken to some people very briefly. Um, I'm really trying to get through this first stage and then work my way into that. Um, but I will promise you that we will have a meeting and you can speak directly to whoever we partner with who's going to run this. I can't really give a discount on something. I don't even know what it's going to cost yet. You know, so I, I you know, it's not my, it's not what I'm going to do. I'm not going to run it. So uh, on that, that question, I'm sorry, I can't, I can't answer that. I mean, I'm from Brockton. I think there'll be plenty of uh, things for Brockton kids to do here for a reasonable price. And I think when you add up what they charge an hour and per kid, we did the math, it's like $10 a game. Um, so it's pretty reasonable. And, you know, maybe they, if they discount it to five or something, I don't know. I don't know how they're going to discount it. I don't know if they even do discount it. But um, I, I, again, I'm more inter interested in talking about the neighbors. I will say that we will stipulate um, privacy for the neighbors. That will be a definite. I mean, you know, and in and, and the town also, the town planner. Um, Jack Lally, um, the mayor, everyone's going to be involved in making sure the neighbors uh, are happy. I mean, it's, it's, you know, that's going to happen no matter what, no matter who takes over, you know, how we build it and, you know, keeping privacy. And during the time that we build it, you know, it would be where we'd be very respectful of, of, of when we start construction and when we end construction, you know, things like that. That, that I can say, I can speak to that, but I can't really speak to discounts and, and things like that at this and how point. How long does the construction last? This construction could go um, from beginning to end. It's a very rocky site, as one gentleman did uh, say. Uh, it could it could go for two years. You know, it could be it could be from beginning to end. You know, the start to the end. It could take uh, two years to do. If everything goes smooth, you might be able to pull it off in a year. But you know, it could be a two-year project. Thank you. Yeah, I think it's important just to uh, reiterate that. Um, we're very early in the process here, so, it, uh, you know, we're trying to get this out in front of you and, and your councilman's trying to get it out in front of you uh, so that we are communicating to you. So if we don't have all the answers to your questions or, or know everything, know that you're going to have input further on down the line. We're, in, we're, we're kind of introducing this to you, so uh, if you keep that in mind, uh, be great. Hi, my name is Andrea Hartley. I live on Claremont Ave. I'm going to try. Um, my question was, you mentioned the facility in Tom and how you're kind of using that as a model. If we were to go to that facility in Taunton, would we see a lot of the things that you put here, like Absolutely. the berms and the space between houses and things like that? Um, because it's tough to visualize a six-foot berm. I'm 5'2". <laughs> I don't know if Taunton has berms, but it's in a neighborhood. It's on a neighborhood street. Um, we're on Route 37, which is, I think, a, you know, a busier road than where it is in Taunton, but you really should go look at Taunton or go online and look at Four Kicks online. You'll see the size of the building. You'll see, you know, what, what they've done to buffer uh, the neighborhood out there. They're in a neighborhood. 
they really are. They're on a they're on a residential street. So these are things that we could go see in real life happening now, rather than just visualizing horrible things going on in my backyard. Absolutely, yes. absolutely true. Uh, one thing uh, I'm pretty sure that we have uh, more parking than Taunton has. Uh, so one of the it's not a plus to some of us. <laughs> well, well, in in the sense that uh, we Taunton at times may have some overflow issues with their parking, and, and I want to point out that uh, we've taken that into consideration as we're laying out the parking for our facility. Thank you for coming to talk to us. You're welcome. Hi, my name is Margaret Martino, and I live on Dorothy Road. Um, thank you again for addressing our concerns. Um, I am a little excited about the complex, but I do have a concern due to major construction that we've had done um, in the past for residential homes that have gone up. I live on that little triangle of North Abington and Hober. And a major problem that we're still dealing with with that construction are rodents. Um, you're talking about possibly tearing down 22 acre, eight acres of wood which means more wildlife that we're going to have to deal with and possibly more rodents. Now, when we've tried to address this with the city in the past, um, we were told that's not their problem. So my question is, if you're going to be tearing down all these woods and there is going to be more rodent problems because you're tearing down all this, you know, these woods, Will there be um, some type of help to the residents in these areas if we are inundated with rodents again? Uh, just a clarification, are you referring to mice or rats? Rats. You're referring to rats. Okay. Uh, I mean, this is a, uh, this, this habitat is not necessarily prime ha habitat for rats. That, that, that we're working in. It, it's, uh, you know, I'm it's a travel pit. I'm, sure I'm sure you're not. I'm, I'm sure you're not. Area. But uh, I, I, I'm I, I, rats in a certain uh, area, and here yeah, that's. A couple of blossoms. That's all I got. Yeah. Uh, no, I, I mean, when they're torn down, when they're torn down the woods in this area, in a certain area, we've experienced it, we've addressed it with City Hall, and we're told that it's not their problem. But. I'm asking you, if there is an issue with rodents, when you start tearing down the woods, is that going to be, are we going to be compensated for extermination if we all of a sudden get inundated with rats again? Um, you know, that's a question, I, I don't have an answer to that question because I've never heard of that. I've heard of tearing down buildings and people, you know, they, they make you exterminate the building before you tear it down because rodents live in the, in the building stuff. I, I don't know how to answer that question at the moment, but I will look into it, and at the next meeting, I'll have an intelligent answer for you uh, to that question. Thank you. Okay? Thank you. Um, hi, my name is Lisa Crowley, and I live at 250 Howard Street, which is pretty close to where that entrance is going to be. Um, I love the idea. I've played soccer for 40 years. I coached and rep. I've been to every one of those state, uh, other facilities that you're talking about. Taunt's great, but if you want to talk to some of the neighbors, go talk, see what they say. Traffic. Um, I know that it's staggered, but people come, people go. Um, Howard Street, that curve, car accidents all the time. Uh, hopefully, maybe that will be uh, rectified with this facility coming in. I wanted to ask, so is it 33 acres total? Yes. And how many are being built on? Um, so from here over is 11 acres. So there's 11 acres of parking from here over. Okay. This building is, how many acres? Is that a four acre building? Uh, like four acres. I think it's, it's the, the, the 22 acres from here over is going to be the fields and in the building. So, I mean, the building itself is the only thing that's really going to be standing, you know, out of the ground. Uh, and that's 126,000 square feet as of right now. That's what we have. Taunton's a 180,000 square foot facility. Every time you build one, it seems to get bigger and bigger because, I don't know, there is a demand for indoor, but we found that outdoor fields will get used uh, a lot more than the, the indoor fields. Even in the winter? 
even in the winter, they actually plow them in, in time. People rather play outside than indoors, um, even in the winter time. If bad conditions, they got to go in, they go in. And the indoor fields, I think, cost more. I think they, and it's a smaller field, they charge you more. So I think they, what they do is they take these fields and split them in half, and then, you know, teams play on this half and teams play on the other half. And then inside, they, we, we have a drawing showing they split it even more. They split it into six fields. Okay. So it's not going to be the entire 32 acres? Um, no, there is some, there's some, you know, some trees along the edges, uh, and we're going to be putting in berms. Wherever there's houses, we're going to build a six-foot high berm, and then we're going to put eight to ten-foot trees on top of it. Okay. So you got, you know, 16 to 18 feet of earth and tree. But pretty you know. much all of that, the trees, the forest, the foliage is going to be gone. That's going to be gone, yeah. Okay. It is going to be gone, yes. And, and Claremont and uh, Chisholm and Howard Ave, are they going to remain dead ends or are they opening up? They're staying dead ends. They're staying dead ends. Yes. So all the traffic is going down Howard Street. Everything's coming out of here and if we realize that there becomes a problem with the bridge. We haven't done a traffic study. We will do one. But if there becomes a problem with the bridge, we'll direct traffic. We're going to have police officers directing traffic if it gets crazy, you know. And they'll direct traffic to the right and, and send people that way. I mean, we'll just, if there's an issue, we're going to address it, you know. Sure. And we haven't done a study yet on traffic, but we will. That will that's yet to come. We're so early in this thing. You know, right. we're at the early stages. We, you know, I, I feel bad we don't have every answer for you, but we wanted to get to you folks before we got too far ahead of ourselves as well. Right. Well, my other question was, is there a sign-up sheet so we could all get, like, on an email list? Yeah, so sure. when things um, start rolling, the when the planning board, are you guys, are you going to the planning board or the ZBA? Uh, it, it, it's been rezoned as sports complex. Um, so we don't have to go to ZBA. Um, I'm sure we'll be going in front of uh, a, a site plan review, planning board. There's going to be tons of drainage under this parking. No water is going to be going onto anyone's property. It's all going to be contained well on this property. Because the pools now as it is. Yeah. Anybody's been down Howard Street. It'll actually improve um, the way they're going to set up the drainage. I mean, today you can't drain your water onto someone else's property. It just doesn't happen, you know. Well, That's what they say. yeah. Um, <laughs> anyway, but anyhow, uh, thank you very much, and um, just I hope it comes out great. Thank you. Uh, thank you for your question. Thank you. Uh, uh, Jack, thanks. Uh, I live on Claremont Ave, and um, we're, obviously a lot of us are concerned about the parking behind our houses or in the front of our houses. Um, especially that 11 acres that is low land uh, watershed. So where would you be piping that water? So uh, I'll, I'll field that question. So the water will be contained on site. Uh, we're not uh, we're not shedding or piping water off the site. It's going to be um, the water that comes on the site now stays on the site. Uh, it's part of the Massachusetts Environmental Protection Agency requirements. Uh, uh, so the water flow off of the site is, is, is not going to change from what we have. So, so, yeah. um, there'll be engineers that will design fields underground, almost like a septic system, but you know, not septic going in, there'll be water going in it. They use these huge chambers and they fill them with it. their huge fields. It, it could be like the whole size of part of the parking lot here and, and they create voids in the ground. So, and all the water drains into those voids and it sits there. It holds water until it can go back into the water table. So, they, they design fields for that. They're called drainage fields. Like when they did the Copeland Chevrolet, there was three huge drainage fields in that parking lot. That's what they do today. If you're going to repave your parking lot, years ago they didn't. But if you're going to repave your parking lot in Brockton, you have to hire an engineer, cost you a fortune, and you have to put these drainage fields in. They're very expensive to put in. But that's what they do. They recharge the water back into the ground. So, you know, we're not at that stage yet, but there will be, you know, and we're going to have to address all that with site plan review. There's going to be engineers working on this um, to make sure that there's enough volume to hold the water. They, that's why they do perk testing. There's going to be a lot of stuff going on before this project even takes off, you know. So that's a major concern for a lot of people, and today, like I said, I know you guys are laughing, but it, it's you can't build a commercial site and dump water onto other people's property. You can't. Yeah, because I know there's a little creek on the edge there, near the halfway down. Or if there's any wetlands issues or anything like that, it's, it's no, nothing's going to be built on. You know what I mean? It's so glad you couldn't recycle that water. Because now my other question is, um, 
Are you guys going to be buying city water? Are these going to be real fields or artificial fields on outdoors? They're going to be artificial fields. All outdoors. Yeah, there'll be water used. It will be city water so being used. Also have drainage for underneath those fields too. Correct. Correct. Okay. Now, you know, a lot of people, like I say, are concerned about parking on the street. Because if you have the park lot all the way down here, and you've got the baseball field and the soccer field, wouldn't everybody be parking here to use this facility? The, It'd be closer. The, fa the facility? No, it won't be. The facility... Well, for the outdoor soccer field. Oh, you mean parking over there? Yeah. Well, i, I got to say that most people are going to come through the building first. They register to come in. And then they, they come out of the back of the building usually and go to the field. So they have to register to go out yeah, to the field. Yeah, exactly right. But the rest yeah. of the family could park somewhere else and one well, 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 person. You, you see, there'd, be, there'd be a fence. You yeah. see 800 spots here, right? Well, you know, the 800 spots aren't going to be used every day, day in and day out. Right. When you have tournaments on the weekends, they'll get used. But other than that, these, these spots are going to be empty during the week unless you have some kind of event. I mean, we did it. You know, it, we did it so people wouldn't be spilling out into the street, but it's, we don't need 800 spots day in and day out. You know what I mean? It's a weekend thing, tournaments. People come, watch their children play. Grandmother comes, she watches it play. She gets tired, she leaves. You know what I mean? It's, that's, that's basically how it goes. And, and tournament teams get taken out of the tournament, they leave. Or they stay. You know, I mean, they stay and watch. I mean, it's, it's coming and going all day, but there'll be... I don't think parking is going to be an issue. I don't think it's going to spill over into the neighborhoods. I really don't. I mean, that's why we, we would have loved to add another field here, you know, but we knew that for the reason of parking, um, we couldn't do that. So oh, I'm just curious, why wasn't the parking done on a better area where this is a low area? It was almost all fields at one time where we're going to park. Is that because of the water table down here? Or that's, you didn't this, want to put a building because of the this, pass the dirt test? This, this, we haven't done a dirt test. This plan could change. There could be fields here and parking there. It could change. You know, we threw this together the best. We did a lot of research. We did it the best way we could. It's an odd-shaped property. It's not like it's a beautiful rectangle to work with. It was a tricky thing to do to fit what we could fit in there. We spent a lot of time and money trying to get this to look right. But a guy could come in that does this for a living and say, this is wrong. You know, you need the fields here and you need the building here. So this isn't the final plan yet. I, I know that 11 acres is a, a feasting area for hawks, for the, the mice and the rats, yep. as a matter of fact, because we walk, a lot of us walk our animals and pets through this area. And that industrial park, it has the drainage underground. And at times during the day, you can see rats running through that wow. water system there. Um, so uh, the, the fields will be open until 10. Indoor facility 24-7? or are they No. Closed? No, 10 o'clock. They, they usually shut the whole place down at 10 o'clock. Will tailgating be allowed in the pack a lot no. during events? No. No drinking. No, no, no. I mean, I don't, no. I don't know if they're going to allow people to cook on grills. I don't think it's that type of thing. It's more of a, uh, you know, parents are in a hurry. They want to get their kid there. They want to watch their kid play, and they leave. It's not like the Patriots game. It's not. It's, it's more, uh, more organized sports, you know. That's what it is. I mean, you're doing everything you can to get your kid there. You know what I mean? It's, I'd like to say, we're in this area, we're concerned about off-street parking, the same little walking distance, but I uh, appreciate you answering the questions to the best of your ability. Um, that's amazing, but it's too bad to, well, there are artificial fields, but it's too bad we can recycle that water somewhere else and be able to use it, you know? Because we have a lot of wells in our area. I have a well in my house, and I hopefully that will drain up the water source that we can rely on as well. The water, the water will get recharged back into the ground. Okay. Yeah, cool. that, that's what's going to happen. Mark. Yep, you got it. How are you? My name is Jacob Sacker. I live um, at Interville Street with my wife and my daughter and my son. I, my biggest concern um, and main reason for coming here is because I am concerned and see a demand for a facility like this for the youth in the city of Brockton. So I wanted to make sure I came up, not so much to ask questions, but to tell you personally, thank you for actually trying to bring a business that will benefit the young people in the city of Brockton. <laughs> <laughs> I also want to tell you, I appreciate it, because a lot of times in the city we don't get information. So I do appreciate Council Valley and everyone who organized this, allowing us as residents to come in here 
you know exactly what the plans are and understand that this is in the beginning stages. He, there's still work to be done, but I go to these facilities. I've been coaching since I had hair in high school, 22 years ago. I've coached thousands of kids. I'm still doing it today. We have a team going to Orlando, Florida, number one in the state, and in Massachusetts. And we go to these facilities, Tom, um, again, whoever, whoever the young lady was that mentioned, to, um, it's a good thing to go see one of these facilities. The Taunton one is a good one because it is in a residential area. It's a neighborhood, but you couldn't tell. It's just, it's absolutely gorgeous. Um, I just wanted to tell you thank you. Like, truly, I wanted to tell you thank, thank you. Thank you, I appreciate that. Thank you very much. The parents who go to these facilities, the hundreds of kids I see every week from Brockton going to these facilities, thank you. So thank you very much, sir. Thank you, thank you. Uh, my name is Alex Boucher. I live on Jordan Street. I know it's early stages, Mark, but can you tell me, is there any give back to the community by having this facility built? Um, well, I guess I'm glad you asked me that because we did, in our proposal to the city, um, we are going to be um, renovating the, the Brookfield uh, baseball fields. Um, we're going to renovate the fields for, for them. We're going to build them a, a concession uh, stand. Um, we're going to do irrigation on the fields. And we're going to work very closely with Tim Carpenter from the Parks Department, Jack Lally, and people in the neighborhood like yourself uh, to see what they need for those fields because, the, you know, they need a little help. Brookfield baseball is a strong, strong thing from I'm finding out. You know, it's a very strong thing. And, you know, you look at the west side of Brockton, you got, they have, you know, the high school they have the Rock Stadium. They got the fairgrounds. They got everything over there. This is a good thing for the north side of the city, for the northeast side of the city, I think. I think it's a good thing for this side of the city. Thank you. My, my concern is it's not Brookfield Baseball anymore. Okay, sorry about that. <laughs> it's, it's, Bro it's Brock and Youth Baseball. Yep. And we want to get the whole city together as one league and play on these fields. Yeah. So that's what we were, we're trying to do. So my question is, uh, should I say thank you? Uh, it's for the kids. Thank you. Thank you. Alex. If I if I might um, about the about the give back, you know, very very good question. Uh, I will be working with Miss Mr. Rukas, uh, Mr. Carpenter, myself, and a representative or representatives from the Little League will all meet after you know it, at at su at some point. We'll all meet and discuss the logistics, the where, the when, the why, and the how, um, you know, and, and what to do with the fields uh, at a at a later date. But we will we will include, you know, we will include representatives from the league in that discussion. Hello, my name is Donna, and I live on Claremont Avenue. Um, the parking, yes, the parking lot will be right behind my backyard. So my question is, um, you said for, it'll take two years to build. Are we gonna? Am I gonna hear two years of continuous uh, jackhammers, uh, plows, plow, everything for two years in my backyard for two years? Am I gonna, is that true? No, I don't think so. Not in your backyard, but there will be construction. More of the noise is going to be on this end. There will be noise here when we when we build okay. the parking lot. Right. Um, but it won't be two years right in front of your house, and it won't be two years right in front of their house. It's going to be staggered. Staggered, yeah, okay. it will. And, and if you have concerns, you know, you call. You yeah. just call. If, 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 right. if, if, if something's driving you crazy, you call us up, yes. and we do what we can to, to stop it. And you know? what would be your uh, hours of uh, construction? Are you could start, like, at 7 in the morning and go till 10, 11 at night? I mean, what is no. the... Uh, no, it'll be it'll be regular hours, 7 to 3, maybe 4 at the latest, okay. something like All that. Right. And you also... No, no Sundays. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, it, w w when this project goes, it won't it won't be weekends. Okay. Another thing is, you talk about this burn. I, don't, I never heard of that phrase in my life. And putting up trees. So that's to block out noise. Is that correct? That's and, correct. And and light. 
you have parking lot uh, parking lights there uh, for the lot. Are they going to be on 24/7? And um, how much is that? I wonder will be shining in my backyard at I'm, all I'm, hours. I'm going to let Wayne take that question. <laughs> so, uh, so as part of our response to the RFP, uh, we did a lighting study. It's called the photometric study, mm -hmm. uh, uh, and the things that we were specifically concerned were with was the parking lot light, which uh, no, the lights will be the lights will not be on after the, when the facility shuts down. Uh, and we wanted to make sure that there wasn't light spillover over the property line. And, and the way they do that is they they rate it. Uh, in a unit called a foot candle. Right? So a foot candle is, uh, is, is essentially the amount of light that a, a candle gives off a foot away from it. And uh, what, what we did is we made sure that there was not more than, uh, you know, here it is, it's, it's going to be impossible for you to read, so I'm just going to describe it to you. You're welcome to come up and take a look at it afterwards. But uh, we made sure that um, there wasn't a light bleeding over the property line more than a foot candle. So, uh, and, and in addition to that, uh, we are hoping that this project is going to be a green project and we're going to be using uh, what's called a cutoff fixture to reduce light up that gets thrown up into the sky. Like right. if you go by Westgate or something like that, you'll see a big orange glow. Yes. Uh, that's not that's not what's here. These are these are white lights, and they have cutoffs on them to direct the light down to the areas, to the playing surfaces, and to the parking areas. So uh, it'll be a consistent light level uh, for security. Obviously, we want it to be secure, and we want people to be comfortable there. But we want to, we're also very concerned about how it would affect the neighbors. We've done that study, and we're going to continue to talk about it as the, pro, as the plan develops. Okay. And one last thing, too. You have that entrance on Howard Street. You said, is there going to be a light there, a traffic light? Are you going to, like, um, and it's going to, or is it just cars going to have a stop sign? And, you know, as we're going down, you know, you have to wait. And is it going to be a traffic light there? Well, we're going to do a traffic study at some point. Okay. And if it determines that we need a light, then we'll put a light. If you know, if we need to put a police officer there every time a tournament comes, we'll put a police officer there every time a tournament comes. I mean, that's that's how we'll handle it. I mean, okay. that's going to be something for the future. I mean, you know, I, I think the place will be very busy. You might have to have a police officer there every time you have a big event. You know, something like that. And and one thing um, is you still need to develop things, but is there any, do you know if there's wetlands back there? Because uh, you wouldn't be able to build if there was, right? Correct. Okay. And yes. we are in the process now of delineating the wetlands, finding out where there are. There are wetlands somewhere along this line. I know it's wet on, yes. it goes all the way to Claremont. So, yeah, that's my uh, area. where is it? Over, yeah, over on this side. There's, there are wetlands along the line. I, I'm not really sure where they are yet, but we're going to hire a botanist. He's already been out yeah. uh, a couple and, times. And I'm not very versed at that, but if there was, you can't build on wetlands. Correct. Is that correct. That's correct. Okay. All right. I guess that's it. All right. Good evening, gentlemen. Good evening, everyone. Uh, I want to introduce myself. My name is Jimmy Ferrer, uh, mayoral candidate for the city of Brockton. And uh, I want to thank you all for coming out. I also want to thank the crowd, everyone, for coming out. Uh, it's hard to get people uh, this month people at public meetings, especially me, I know. And um, <clears throat> I want to repeat what Mr. Taggart said uh, for, for the youth. This is, this is definitely what we need because the devil finds work by idle hands. And I, I'm a testament to that. I work at average youth and wish uh, this was around when I was new. <clears throat> Some questions that I have for you is basically. Can you go? Thank you. All right. Can you hear me now? Yeah. That's better? All right. So. Uh, if you didn't hear me, I want to thank everyone for coming out. I uh, just want to say uh, the devil finds uh, work by idle hands. And, and my question to you is, I know you said it's uh, kind of early in the game. You guys still have some traffic studies to do. But I want to make a comment and make sure that you guys take into accommodation for high school pedestrian accommodation, uh, locally as well, and also the facility as well, if there's going to be uh, opportunities for those with mental or physical disabilities to have uh, time at the park. And you mentioned something about the gray water system and fixing the Brookfield Park. I was wondering if you, I know you were charging the aquifer with the water table, but will you use the gray water system to maybe utilize, recycle that water uh, for those fields as well? That's possible. Uh, you want to talk? Yeah. So, so I, I had mentioned earlier that part of our response to the RFP was um, 
you know, our goal to make this building a, a green building, and one of the standards that um, is used to rate buildings is called the LEED standard. Right. And and what we um, what we proposed was a LEED silver certified building, which reuses rainwater and also uses high efficiency fixtures and lighting, and uh, provides for. Uh, Bicycle racks, uh, energy uh, plug-ins for uh, electric vehicles. So uh, our goal is to follow that standard and and to build a, a green building that you know helps our environment. Would you be able to answer the uh, accommodations for those with mental and physical disabilities? Uh, sure. Again, I, you know, I'm sure that whoever runs this, okay, so you know, is gonna is gonna take care of. People like that. I mean, the place will be handicap accessible. It'll be set up for that. Um, you know, I'm sure that that is uh, going to be addressed. You know, I'm pretty. You know, they'd be foolish not to. I right. can tell you that. Thank you. But I, I will mention it to whoever I speak with. Right. I'll mention that to them. Right. All right. Appreciate your time. Sure. Thank you. Real, real quickly, before we uh, before we go to that, um, uh, Jack has mentioned to me that uh, there's uh, there's been a question about the the phasing of the project. And uh, I just wanted to mention that, uh, you know, what what the intent is is that the berm would be built first before the work starts on the site. So that's the first thing that's going to happen there is, as he's doing the site work and and and, and building this out. Uh, just to answer anybody who has that question in their mind, who wanted to, to get that information out to you. Uh, your question, please. Yes, I do have a question. It's, uh, my name is Lauren Brown, and uh, I live right on the field. Back uh, mine. Yes. Hey, Abby. My name's Lauren Brown. I work in the community. I live here. I live right on the Golden Road, and my backyard is on the sideline of the soccer field. So, my question is Have you done a noise study? So, we haven't done a noise study yet, but uh, it's, it's most likely that's, uh, that's going to be part of the planning process for the planning board. Uh, what we've done is we've taken the first steps to anticipate that that would be a concern by building the sound berm. The sound berm is based on other, other berms that we've built and other projects uh, where, where sound studies have been done. So we've, we've taken that first step. We know that it's an issue. We know it's a concern, and, and we're going to address it and make sure that, uh, that that's taken care of. And how much of the uh, line is going to go between the property line and your and the start of the field? How much of a buffer zone between your How much between your property and the field? Where's your property? Can you come show us? That's a two-phase question, because I applied for a property. Right next to mine. six feet high and then on top of the berm there'll be uh, eight to ten <coughs> eight to ten foot plantings trees like uh, something like an evergreen yeah not, maybe not an abavite because the deer seem to eat those but uh, like a white pine or something like that will be on the top of the tree something like that those will grow wild and the people that own the property will you know manage them if there's a problem one dies they'll replace it whoever whoever is running the facility yeah, they have yes. not. We have not. Uh, it could be. It could be. We could build the sound fence. I've done it before. We could build one. Or oh, buy one. And I think, you know, we're going to do the proper engineering and sound studies to determine if, if that's what's required. And that's how we respond to it. 
uh, one, one thing that, uh, you know, we wanted to mention is uh, it, when Mark talks about the stump traffic and stuff, what, what you're going to see is you're going to see uh, a hill of earth with, uh, uh, he's going to have evergreen trees on top of it and, and there's going to be a wildflower mix of green to stabilize the soil and grow in. You still can't hear me? I'm sorry about that. Okay. All right. Uh, so the, the, the berm is going to look like a hill. It's going to have a wildflower mix of grasses and, and flowers on it, along with the evergreen trees. Uh, it's a hill. It's a hill. Okay. All right. All right. Also, the light is going to be on all night. And how long? When is it going to feel open? Feel closed? Not right on the field. Yeah. The fields will probably close around 10 o'clock. That's when most of them do close. The lights will not be on all night. They're going to close down when at 10 o'clock when the fields close. That's when. Okay, so when the lights are on, am I going to be able to see? Is that going to come out? Uh, he addressed this question about two seconds ago. Yeah, he did a lighting that, study. That, that was on the parking side of it? Uh, on the, uh, on side. The, the whole thing, we did a lighting study on the whole thing. There's not going to be any lights shining in your yard. And let me just say for the record, I'm on TV. I, I am for this field for the youth. But it is right in my backyard, so that's why I totally understand that. That's why we're here, because I know I'm going to be in people's backyards. This, but this, really remember, this was rezoned as sporting complex. That's what, this piece of land. That's all you can do with it is sporting complex. The city rezoned this. I didn't rezone it. I know. When I moved there, I wanted to buy the property in the back, but they told me it was a dumping ground for hazardous material. So, you know, is that still true? I, I never heard of that. This this was a, they used to store granite curbing there, and they stored uh, drainage pipe. It's it's the old drain yard for the city. Okay. Could you, uh, could you both you know, just uh, speak up a little? People in the back are having trouble here. You're in my backyard. Hi, my name is Barbara C. I live on Sprague Street. And my lovely neighbors on Howard and Claremont have already brought up most of my concerns. I would just like to uh, reiterate the, the, um, the noise factor, the magical berm that's going to block out all of the noise. If there is a gate at the end of Sprague Street, there's no berm. The noise is going to leak out. Um, can you address the noise concerns? I know you haven't done the noise study yet, but if you do one and the noise is too much, what are you going to do? Uh, if you're over here near Spring Street where the gate is, th this is just going to be parking here. Most so of the my, my, most of the gate is going to be playing back, back there. My house is going to be a parking lot. Where's your house? On Spring Street. Uh, yeah, but where on Spring? Where? I'd rather not tell you where I live. Oh, I don't know where the view is. Then I, I can tell you where the view is on your house. My view will be a parking lot. Yeah. So um, my concerns are noise light, property value. I agree with everyone that this project is great for the city, great for the kids. We haven't heard yet whether our local teams will be able to afford to use the fields. Um, you keep saying we, but then you say you're not going to be running this. Um, so. Do you have a specific question you want me to answer? Um, you answered. Um, my neighbor from Claremont asked most of the most of my questions. I would just like to reiterate that there are concerns for noise, light, I don't want to look out my window and see an ugly building, a parking lot. I'd like to enjoy my backyard on the weekends and not have to listen to tournaments all day. Okay. Do so you oppose? Do you oppose to the project? I am not opposed to the project. If it's done correctly, and it doesn't Okay, sounds good. Thank you very much. Hi, my name is Kevin. But I'm on fair one. Um, as far as wetlands, I was told when I bought my house that there was a wetlands across the street from me. They put three houses there, so there weren't wetlands like I was told. So with this one, well, look at this. this. See this one? Yep. If these, like you're saying, this is wetlands, 
if they tear these trees down, this is a house right there. Am I going to look across the street? Because I'm at the bottom of Claremont. Am I going to look across the street and see a barn? No, Kevin, um, I think where you do live is right here, right? Yes. Is that you? Mm -hmm. um, they did build houses across the street. I had nothing to do with that. <laughs> but, they, but, but there is wetlands behind those houses, I'm pretty sure. None of that will be disturbed. And I think there's wetlands. Um, do you know how you have that? There's like a culvert on the edge of the property. Yeah, yeah. I'm not sure where it is exactly on here. Maybe it's right here. Um, but that will, you know, the wetlands are going to get delineated and there won't be any trees uh, removed where the wetlands are. I think your buffer is going to be pretty good the way you are. So I won't be seeing looking across the little trees and looking at a berm. No, you're not going to be looking at a berm. No. Thanks, Mark. You got it. <laughs> good, good. <laughs> Hi, I'm Ozzy Jordan. I've been over here about 40 years, so I've watched a lot of the development in this area. You're in Ward 6. This is God's country. It's also the quietest part of the city. I'm for this, okay? I'm not against me. 37 in the Howard Street Bridge are the main ways to get into all the housing back here. Alright? 37's a major highway. You put a light up there, it's bad enough now trying to get in the shop. That's a problem. You gotta look at that. Sound, I can tell you. You tell me direction, you tell me the wind speed, and I'll tell you how much sound carries. I can hear the, the railroad that's over on the other side of town, not the one here. The one over, not Holbrook, not here. The one that's over in Weymouth, okay? When the movement was, was operating, it was like you were on the front stairs of it when they had the dances and Concerts. things over there. Concerts, all kinds of things, okay? It's critical that you listen to the homeowners about what they're looking for. You can't impede that traffic. The state did a great job messing it up when they built the bridge there, redid the bridge, okay? So that you can't get in and out. We used to be able to just keep going, but now, because of the way they've done it, you got to sit there for about a half an hour every day, going out and coming in. 37, the same thing will happen, okay? Um, you can't come from the opposite side too easily. Or if you start coming down Quincy Street, which you can catch further down, you're still going to cause problems. So traffic is the one major piece. All those woods, pick an animal. And I tell you if it's there or not. And most of them are. And whoever said they're going to be running out of there, they do. Because everybody that has, on Monday and Tuesday nights, okay, we all have all the animals coming that eat our food, we supply to them, better known as garbage pickup there. Okay? <laughs> We've got raccoons that stand yay high and can knock anything over. And they do, and then everybody else feeds. All right? Point B, it's something the city needs. People don't realize, they're talking about schools and this other thing. This is a private uh, endeavor, thank you back there somebody, <laughs> endeavor that in essence, if you've got the money, you can come and play. I understand that. One of the uh, coaches was here. I left the game out there. My grandson's still there. They're practicing for playoffs. When you walk out that door, please take a look to the left. That's the field. We need lights out there. Developer is part of the deal. Where's Jack? Somewhere. Part of the deal for the city, we need lights out here. There's a light right there that they could hook up to. And this, this league has been going on, my son's what, he's 45 now, okay? He went to school here. My grandson's now going to school here and still don't have lights out there. There's four or five fields. Let's talk about one in particular, all right? Stand, that would be nice too. That's the kind of thing that they ask you to do as part of your community input. That's something that I personally will will do, not whoever runs it. That's something that New Heights will do. Uh, that that was in our proposal. The things that we put in that proposal, and even other things, if you know, like lighting, that wasn't mentioned to us. But we're going to work with um, the Little League and um, Tim Carpenter, the uh, the guy that runs the park, to coordinate with him the times to do this stuff. You know, and what what the, what you guys really need? If if you need lights, then we'll work on getting your lights. Sounds good. Thank you for that. You hear that? That's a good one. All right. Eight hundred cars.
even on a, on a particular day. I don't know how you're going to get them in and out. Um, it's, it's, that's going to be a real rough, it really will be. And maybe out of this, we can also straighten out that bridge so when you come over to come this way, what they didn't do was make it two lanes so those that wanted to come up Winter Street could keep going. Coming the other way, coming up 37 where you'll be, if you've got anything down there, that will block it all the way back to Braintree. And I'm not kidding. All right, that happens on a normal night. You can you can figure how long it's going to take you, at which light you're at, which day it is, and what's going on. You know how long it will take you to get home. I think the good thing is that most of the time when this is going to be full, it's going to be a weekend, so you're not going to have to work traffic like you normally do during the week. You know, I, my yard is. You know, I own this piece of property. I'm here every day. I see the traffic that comes down the road. And it, and it dies down at certain times and it picks up at other times. Um, so we're going to do a traffic study. It's going to give us a lot of information. It's going to help us to address any concerns with traffic like that. It is a major road. That's a blessing. It's not a neighborhood. We're not going through neighborhoods. Um, you know, we're lucky. We're lucky with that. You're wrong on that. It's a neighborhood with a major road running through it. Uh, that's what it is. All right, I got you. That's what it really is. On top of that, okay, it's it's under under this, all of this around here is slate. When they put Eisenhower in over there, it's all rock. Starts up where the tower is by the fire station. The water runs down to the muck. Go down eight feet, you're in water. Okay, so you can't go too deep on this. And trying to put in ponds and stuff, you're going to have trouble trying to do those recovery ponds to do that kind of a piece. I didn't see any solar panels on your outside stuff. I don't see you growing anything on the roofs if you're going to have a green building. Yeah, if you're going to really be green, you know, let's be green. Okay? We're, um, again, we're in the beginning stages of this, you know. I, I'm here because the city put this out as a sporting complex. That's why I'm here, I, and, and, and I'm, I'm willing to take the time, money, and energy to do it. And I just want to make sure that everyone wants it. If, if everyone comes here doesn't want it, you know, then, then we'll, we'll have to decide to do something else with our time. But this, it's, is, it's this planning, is why we're here. It's planning it right. You take the time. You want to find out about the traffic? Go to 37 and ask the people that live there about the traffic. Ask the people that live there by the Howard Bridge about the traffic. And I can tell you, you give me the day and time, and I'll tell you about the traffic. Doing it for 40 years, okay? Um, it's, it's things that you need to look locally, because everybody wants it, we need it. We need it for our kids. It's not gonna be for the schools, all right? It may be for some of the leagues, because that's the way those places work. Our kids right now have to go 15, 20 miles to get into places to do baseball or, or whatever it may be where you go in and train on the off season. It'd be nice to have one here. Are you gonna maybe have tennis courts or things like that also? I mean, everyone asks us all that you're gonna have a swimming pool, you're gonna have, I mean, whatever everyone's interested in, they wanna know. Again, it's it's whatever it dictates. If, if we find that there's a you know a big demand for tennis, whoever runs this, I'm sure they'll make tennis courts out of it. That's the beauty of this space. It's very flexible. You know, they have curtains that come down, they can section things off. They have birthday parties for kids in these buildings. I mean, there's a lot of things they do. It's not just sports stuff, it's training. It's, it's um, you know, they work out and there's physical therapy, things like that. It's, it, there's a lot to these buildings, you know. That's most of what it is, yeah. to just say, okay. It's not a daily kind of disco play. It is training, it is physical therapy, and that's much different than the sports kind of complex, like it's down on Route 1, okay? Um, it's not professional teams either, it's local teams or whatever. Again, please talk to the folks locally. I don't know even- That's why we're here. I mean, that's no, we're doing you're here. doing this, right? But I'm talking about go down along those streets there. You can say to those folks, look, how do you, you know, what's the story? Here's what's happening. Some people talk about their backyards. We've seen that. That happened up there when they um, uh, changed some of the stuff around the, the high school, up around where the stadium's built. And those folks again can tell you, the sound in here, it is like a bowl. And almost any night, when you go out here, when you leave here now, stop for a minute, wait till the cars go, 
tell me what you hear. Nothing. Go to another part of the city and see if you find that. Thank you for coming. We do need you. Just please do the pre-planning. That's why we're here. Good evening. Mark, how are you? Um, my name is Roy Walker. I live in Hunter Sav. Um, not in the immediate neighborhood, but as a Brockton resident and certainly as a parent, I can tell you that I spent a lot of time. I have two teenagers inside and out of these particular facilities in Mansfield and Foxborough and places that are 20, 40 minutes away for our kids to have to go and to compete. And so a project like this is so welcome and so overdue in my opinion. I want to thank you very much for the efforts that you're making. Thank you, Roy. Thank you. I have a question, and I understand that you may not have this information now, but I, I think it would be enlightening for, you, for folks to hear about it in the future, which is we're talking a lot about the impact um, as far as a negative. Have you guys done studies or do you have projections on what the financial benefits would be to the city and to the neighborhoods? Um, yeah, uh, Tom, you want to speak on that? Uh, this project, Tom, for the record, this project isn't going to do anything to the schools, do anything to the public works. I can say the water usage would be minimal, if anything. I mean, flushing toilets and uh, sanitary reasons, but we are going to try to recycle the water, the roof water, the underground. I'm asking about benefits, so the economic okay. benefits. Yeah, no, no, no. I'm sorry, I was getting to that. I really sorry, was. I didn't want to catch you. Okay. Our projected. It's the, getting late. The, okay, the projected tax benefit to the city would be somewhere around $300,000 a year, which right now there's nothing coming to the city. Thank you very much. That's what I mean. Okay. But there's no, again, what I'm saying is there's, there's no, uh, uh, you know, strain on the school system where, you know, you put up 40 houses there, all of a sudden you've got 80 or 90 kids you have to pay to educate. Absolutely. Okay? That's it. Thank okay. you. Thank, thank you very much for your question. Well, I think uh, you will see us back in front of you uh, with, uh, with hopefully more answers to your questions uh, and more, more pictures and uh, more solar panels on the roof. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, you know, please feel free to, uh, you know, come up and ask questions after. We'll be, we'll be here uh, at the boards. And uh, we'd like to thank the chapter for having us here and uh, the opportunity to present us. I'd like to thank Mark for, uh, for bringing uh, our team on for this project. It's, uh, it's, a, great, it's a great thing, and uh, we're excited to, to work on it. Thank you. Not to get too confusing about this, but the way this RFP was put together by the city, there was a bidding process, which again, it was, it was really, really only one bid submitted. Um, then it goes into an ENA agreement, and that's an exclusive negotiating agreement with New Heights, with the city. And that ends sometime early September. So there's still some time here to talk about these different issues that maybe every answer isn't, isn't pat out there right now, but the answers will, will formulate as we move forward. Okay? This isn't something that's going to start next week. Okay, thank you. Well, thank you all for, uh, thank you all for coming. As, as was already mentioned, uh, I'll be staying here. I know, I know uh, these guys will stick around a bit uh, for any other questions or concerns you'd rather ask, you know, one-on-one. -on -one. Um, I certainly appreciate everyone coming out. This is, this is definitely one of the, one of the, uh, the largest community meetings on, on a single subject that, you know, that I've ever seen. So please give yourself a pat on the back for, you know, being committed to, you know, to your neighborhood. Um, you know, thank you all for coming out, and uh, if I don't see you on the way out, have a nice night. Thank you.